Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be doing a quilting play-by-play -play where I show you how I quilted our latest Stash of Stephanie release cables. This was inspired by cable knitting patterns. So when I did my quilting, I tried to resemble a knit stitch by making little V's going across the entire thing. And once I got done, I was looking at some of the socks that I was currently knitting. I was like, really, I should have connected this up but that's okay, we can try that on another one. It still looks pretty cool. It still has like a knitted texture to it, even though it's a quilt, so it's gonna be really fun and I can't wait to show you how I did it. We're going to watch me quilting it uh, together on the GoPro camera and I'm gonna talk you through what I did to make it easier for myself and how I made this happen. Before I get into that though, I wanna tell you a little bit about Stashing with Stephanie. It's a subscription club we have here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous where you can get 10 fat quarters in a bundle every single month. This month included this beautiful fabric, Delilah from Clothworks, it's very fancy. And then I designed a pattern that is specifically inspired by the fabric. And I, every single time I take a look at the pat or the fabric that's come and I'm like, how can we make this live its best life? And this was one of the ways that I came up with for this month. There are more than $400 worth of free patterns that you get access to once you join, in addition to that fat quarter bundle that you're gonna get every single month. And you never have to do the project that I come up with, but if you like it, we offer to our members something called a finishing kit. And in that you get the five fat quarters you didn't receive in your bundle, plus your background fabric and your binding. And that way you have enough when you combine your bundle with your finishing kit to have a full quilt kit and you can make it the way I did. So that is really fun. You get 20% off that additional purchase along with any other fabric that you would like to have that collection. So if you have something else in mind for it, you would like to make it maybe another pattern that we designed that you can get for free or you have something else in mind for it, whatever you wanna do, it's totally up to you. You never have to do the project, so don't feel like you're getting behind if you don't do that quilt every single month. Um, you could just have it in your stash for the moment when it's perfect to use it for. And in addition to all that, you also get first dibs on getting additional fabric because sometimes not all the fabrics sell out, but some of the key ones will sell out before we open it up to everyone else to purchase who's not a member. And you also get an exclusive discount on my two Fat Quarter Friendly books, Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop. So you can get both of those and you can get a signed copy if you order from us and get an exclusive discount to go with that. So it's a great club to be a part of. It's really fun. We've got a Facebook group and I love seeing what everybody comes up with in there that's different than the original quilt that I designed. I've seen a lot of grid works lately in all different colorways and they look fantastic. I'm always really excited to see how you guys interpret those. So check that out. If you join before uh, January 31st, then your first bundle will be shipped around the 20, 20th to 22nd of February. If you join, um, um, February 1st or later, you're going to be waiting until March um, 20th or to 22nd to get that shipment notification. That is because um, we need to know exactly how many bundles we're getting so that way we can prepare the correct amount. And once we do release it, it is kind of a mad dash on additional fabric. So we wanna make sure that everyone has the same chance to get more fabric. And if we sent it out throughout the month, then that wouldn't be fair to those who renew at the beginning of the month versus the end. So check it out. All of that is available over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, let's get in on that quilting play-by-play. -play. So the very first thing I did was mark one inch increments, just using my regular six by 24 inch ruler and a friction gel pen. I really love these. I get a lot of flack um, from folks who say that it comes back in the cold and it has to be really cold for a really prolonged amount of time for it to come back. The day we shot this photo, um, it was about eight degrees outside and no lines have come back. So we were outside for, for a little bit of time for that. So you'd have to really like leave it out in the car overnight. Um, I've had where I've shipped all over the country with these friction gel pens and, and never had a problem. But essentially I'm gonna be doing one inch increments for my Vs. I considered doing two, but because it doesn't line up exactly with the alternating rows, I thought it would be too hard to alternate that and the, the pattern might look a little different. 
So I decided to go with the one inch increments to match the one inch width of the finished cable um, for that strip piecing. So I'm just going along and marking in the light version. So this tells me where the bottom of my V is going to hit. I had thought that maybe I would be able to eyeball this eventually um, as after I'd done a bit, but I found that it was just easiest to mark it the, the whole way across. All right, so now you can see that I'm starting to quilt and I am quilting, I'm kind of doing a sharp point at the top, but I'm doing a curved bottom. So I'm kind of aiming for the middle and then coming up. And you're gonna see me stop here in a second. And that is so that I can stop the needle down right here and I'm physically moving my body over. So that way the long arm is always kind of like right in front of me. And that way I get better results because I have better control over the long arm. A lot of times when you're doing free motion, you can kind of just shuffle to the side and it's not really a problem. Um, but for this one, since I wanted it to be a really defined pointy top, I made sure to stop at the top and pause, like physically pause the machine and then move my body, which you can see that I just did there. And then we're going from there. I think our video editor going forward is taking out those pauses, but know that I did that every five or six. Um, so that way I would be able to um, move my body and keep everything nice and steady with the machine. But you can see I'm just going down and up and I'm aiming for the top to get a little pointy and then the bottom to have a little bit of curve to it. Now, I am not perfect in any of these. Um, if you wanted it to be perfect, you would have a, a quilting or machine guided quilting and that's not what I have, it's all hand guided. And I think that's part of the fun of it. You know, it's something that's handmade and so it doesn't have to be the exact same. But I really enjoyed the final look of this. Our video editor is also an avid knitter and she thought it looked so cool to have it all done and have the texture of it and not only have like the knitting theme with the cable design, but also in the texture of those um, Vs to kind of create a stockinette type look to it. It really is kind of fun. Um, so you can see I'm just making my way across and actually you can see right here I forgot to mark a little bit of that and it was hard for me to tell where I needed to be even though I'd already done several rows at this point. So I, it really was really helpful for me to, to have that as a guide. So you're just going to see it again. My machine doesn't like to go from right to left. It only likes to go from left to right. So every single time I would break my thread, come all the way to the back and do it one more time. So I think we'll watch this part in fast forward because it basically is the exact same thing I was just doing. You're just making a bunch of tiny little V's going down and up again. Um, it took me about three, three and a half hours to do the lap size quilt, which is not bad, um, even though everything was really tiny. And I think it was only two bobbins, maybe three. I think it was just two bobbins. So it's not that much quilting. Um, it might be denser than some of you guys are used to, but um, it is definitely really easy. And when you're all done, you're just gonna take your um, quilt over to the ironing board and iron those lines and they're gonna go away and stay away. And so I know there are people who have had horror stories with these, but I haven't actually met any of them in person. So it might be like one of those like internet rumor things that doesn't really exist. Cause I've, I've never had a problem. I have a quilt that got shipped all over the country that I had marked literally all over it with these friction gel pen marks and nothing has ever come back on it. Um, so I, I, I don't know what has to happen in order for the marks to come back, but it has never happened in any of the circumstances in which my quilts have been under. So, and I've done a lot, a lot of quilts. So um, that's take that for what it is. All right, so let's watch the rest of this and fast forward. And you can see that this is like a really easy stitch and not everyone is perfect. There was one back a little bit there that was kind of a hot mess, but it's okay because it looks good in the end. You know, you see the texture more than where it wasn't perfect every single time.
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the quilting play-by-play -play of how I created kind of a stockinette knitted look um, on our quilted quilt. So that was really fun for me. It kind of melded my two loves together of knitting and quilting. I find that knitting is a little bit more portable. I know we can do English paper piecing, but that requires like prep ahead of time. And knitting, I can just throw in my bag and I just need, you know, my knitting needles and my current project and I'm, I'm good to go. So I do that a lot while I'm waiting around for my kids at various things where like before appointments when you have to get there a little early and I can get quite a bit done. Um, I'm already on my third pair of socks for 2023 and we're not totally done with January yet. So that's, it's pretty, pretty good amount of just time where I would either wear, otherwise just be scrolling my phone. So I feel a little bit better about myself because I have accomplished a thing. So that is fun. Got to combine the two. And I hope that you are not intimidated by working small. I mean, this is really a small design. It's one inch wide by one inch tall for every single little V that we created, but it didn't, it wasn't hard. It didn't take a long time. And most importantly, it didn't matter if each one wasn't identical. As when you look at it as a whole here, it just see that really cool texture. You're not seeing that this V doesn't match this V perfectly and that's okay that it doesn't. So I hope you um, are inspired to try something that maybe is gonna take a little bit more time, but really does your quilt justice. Um, I really am not a fan of just going sort of wham bam, thank you ma'am, over your quilt with your quilting. I like to pick something that honors both the design and the fabric. Um, so a lot of times I'm thinking, how can I accentuate both? And in this case, this was the perfect stitch to do that. Um, other quilts are gonna be other stitches, but for this one, in order to sort of take that knitting theme all the way through, this was the way to go for me. Um, so check that out. I hope you've enjoyed this and make sure you check out Stashing with Stephanie. And until next time, happy quilting. <laughs>